The Java Concurrent Map Interface represents a map that is threat safe to use. Additionally, the Java Concurrent Map implementation Concurrent Hash Map offers better concurrency than the Java Hash Table, which was, until Concurrent Hash Map and Concurrent Map were added, the only other threat safe map implementation available in Java. If you look at this code example here, you can see that it is creating uh, three maps. This is a standard hash map. The second is a hash table, which also implements the map interface. And this uh, hash table here, the implementation is synchronized, so all the methods on the hash table is synchronized. While that provides a good level of threat safety, it does not um, provide very good concurrency, meaning it is blocking too much, uh, more than necessary, uh, blocking different threats from accessing the, the hash table. Then you can see here, I am creating an instance, or the example is creating an instance of the concurrent hash map, which is the the concurrent, the more concurrent implementation of the map interface than the hash table. And as you can see, we have added a concurrent map interface here, um, which the concurrent hash map also implements. And the concurrent map uh, interface extends the map interface. So that is how the, the hierarchy works. So this concurrent hash map here, this implementation provides better um, concurrency than the hash table. And hash map does not provide any uh, uh, threat safety uh, at all. Um, both of these two here provide threat safety, but concurrent hash maps provides the best concurrency. When I say that the concurrent hash map here provides better concurrency than the hash table, what I mean is that all the methods in the hash table here are synchronized. That means that only one thread at a time can call a method on the hash table. Whereas the concurrent hash map here is designed so that you can actually have multiple threads reading from the hash map at the same time. And you can also have multiple uh, threads write to the hash map at the same time, provided they're not writing to the same key and probably also not writing to the same internal bucket inside the, uh, inside the map. The buckets are where the keys and key value pairs are stored and some key value pairs land up in the same buckets. So whereas the hash table here only allows one thread at a time to call any of its methods, a concurrent hash map here actually allows multiple threads to call the map at the same time, provided that they're not accessing the same keys or maybe possibly the same buckets. That means that same internal buckets. That means that there's a, a lot more threads are able to uh, read and write from the concurrent hash map at the same time. And that is what I mean by the concurrent hash map providing better, better concurrency than the hash table. I'm not going to go through the entire concurrent map interface because um, in practical use, you will use it pretty much like you use a map. But I am going to show you just a couple of the key uh, methods here and um, show you also one or two things that are one thing that you need to watch out for so as you can see concurrent map here concurrent map has a put method just like the map interface and it has a get method where you can get whatever you put into the map back again now as you can see I created this concurrent map here without any Java generics. By the way, if you are new to Java generics, check out the description below the video. And I have a, I have a video and a tutorial, textual tutorial about uh, Java generics there, a link to that. Um, so as you can see, I could create a concurrent map where the key has to be a string and the value has to be a string as well. And then I uh, create a concurrent hash map, which is the implementation of concurrent map. And now you can see I can only put uh, key, uh, strings as keys uh, and strings as values in here. If I try to put something in else in, let's just try to put like a, a new uh, a new integer, one, two, three. You can see now we get a compiler error saying that um, actually the, um, the Java util map, maybe it's not so uh, visible for you that Java util map cannot be applied to string integer because it is said to be string string. All right, let's remove this line again. Now, similarly, you can remove a 
a value or like a key value pair from the map co by calling the remove okay and everything else works pretty much the same like if you want to get the keys in a concurrent uh, hash map you will again use the key set and uh, iterator and uh, you can um, you can do like you can iterate it like this but um, that is pretty standard behavior from a, a, a standard Java map and by the way um, if you want to know more about the Java map interface I also have a link to a video uh, and textual tutorial in the description below uh, this video for that so the last thing that I want to talk a little bit about here is the problem of slipped conditions Slipped conditions is a situation that can occur if two or more threads first check the same condition and then act based on that condition in a way that changes the condition for the other threads or that should have changed the condition for the other threads. Here's an example. Imagine two or more threads are executing this uh, code at exactly the same time, this if statement here. The if statement here checks if the concurrent map um, contains the key key two, and if it does not, it inserts the key um, value pair here. Now imagine if two threads or more threads execute this uh, method call at the exact same time. There might actually be more than one thread that detects that there is no key two in the concurrent map two instance uh, in the concurrent map instance because no one has yet inserted anything. So both of these threads, or more than two threads, might actually enter the body of the if statement. And they will both call put and insert a key value pair. And that means that the second, the second thread that calls put will override the value inserted by the first thread. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter because we are inserting the exact same key value pair into the map. But it could be that this value here was uh, computed based on something that is local to the thread, or maybe it was a heavy um, computation to perform, or like maybe it was data that has to be looked up in an external system and you don't want to look it up more than one time. Then, yeah, maybe you don't want this if body to be executed more than one time. Now, even if you look up a value in a database and you cache it inside of a concurrent map, having it looked up two, three, four times, this is maybe not uh, like a big uh, problem uh, performance-wise, but um, it might still be a little bit annoying and you can actually avoid it. But anyways, this is what slip condition means. It means that from the time you check the condition until you act upon it and then change that condition, the condition might actually have changed. It might have slipped in that meantime. Why? Because from thread two checks this and sees that, okay, um, the concurrent map two does not contain this key two, and then one enters the, uh, this body here. By that time, another thread may have already inserted this value. So now there is actually, by the time that the second thread is, is ready to call put, there is actually a value in the map, and it should not put anything into it. But that is too late to do anything about because the condition was checked up here and now the condition has changed and there's no way to detect it down here. I mean, you could call contains key again, but the problem would be the exact same thing. Slipped conditions could just occur one more time. The solution to uh, slipped conditions is to make the condition check and the action up uh, upon the condition check an atomic operation. And you can do that using uh, the concurrent map uh, two, um, or the concurrent maps uh, put if absent method here. The put if absent method will insert the key value pair into the map if there is al not already a key value pair for this, um, for this key. 
And this is then an atomic operation, so only one thread per um, only one thread per key will be allowed to insert um, anything into the uh, uh, insert a value for this key into the map. If two threads call this for different keys, they probably would be allowed to um, uh, insert the key value pair into the map at the same time. And the uh, and the uh, the exception to that could be if the, the key value pairs ends up going into the same internal bucket in the concurrent map, then they might have to wait for each other. But if they go into different buckets, then most likely, as far as I understand, they will be allowed to insert the values into the map at the same time. Now, here we're just inserting a very simple value here, right? If the if the value was a value that was expensive to compute, we don't want to first compute the value and then only insert it if, uh, if the, this key is absent. We actually don't want to compute this value if this key is absent. And you can do that with the compute if absent method instead. So the compute if absent method will um, will check if this key here is present in the map and then it will if it is not it will call this lambda function this java lambda function that um, you are passing to it here as the second parameter and then it has to whatever it computes you know if it looks it up in a database or something like that it has to return that value from this lambda function here you get the key as parameter and then you have to return the value. So this way, only if this key is missing, is this a lambda function called, and then this method here is computed. And again, no two threads can do this for the same key at the same time. Um, but if the keys are different, and probably if they end up in different buckets internally, you can actually insert uncompute uh, values for two different keys at the same time for the same map instance. For the sake of completeness, the concurrent map interface also con contains a compute if present method. So in case there is already a key, a value pair for this key, then um, this key, this uh, lambda here will be called with the key and the existing value and then you are um, able to compute a new value. Now in this case we just return an empty string or like new value whatever I want to write here um, and that uh, gives you the opportunity to to um, to compute a new value for an, ex an existing key value pair only if the the key value pair is already existing in the map now which of these methods you will you will need depends on your use case but quite often, if you're doing caching, you will use the computer absent because you want to um, you want to recompute the you want to insert a value to into the cache if it is not already there. And um, yeah, that shows you how to avoid slipped conditions with a you know with a concurrent map. And you have to remember that this is not a problem. Like slipped conditions is not just a problem of the concurrent map. This is a, a problem with with any uh, concurrent data structure that you are using in Java or in any other language for that matter, where you have one, where you call one method to check a condition and then use another method to act upon that condition, which changes this previous condition check. So um, you can avoid that, avoid that by turning this uh, check and action into an atomic operation, and you can do that in concurrent map with put if absent or compute if absent or compute if present. That is all for this video about the Java concurrent map and its implementation, the concurrent hash map. Remember to check out the description below this video for links to related tutorials, you know, some of the tutorials that I mentioned in this video. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.